Hmm. How would you engrave these using the least amount of labor possible? Hey Maker, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, I'm Emily, otherwise known as That Mom with a Laser. And it's on this channel where I attempt to simplify what it's like to operate a commercial grade laser. And hopefully I do that while filling the maker heart and fueling the entrepreneurial spirit. Now, before we get started today, I wanna go ahead and give a few shout outs because the truth is I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So if you wanna have a shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you take a screenshot of yourself watching this video and tag me either in Instagram, in my Facebook group, or comment below and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, I do have a freebie that I'm giving away with today's tutorial, so make sure you watch through the end so you can find out how to get it. And with that, are you ready? Let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out my jig. Now, normally I like to cut a jig um, using cardboard. It's cheap, easy to get, and easy to throw away if I'm not using it over and over again. But cardboard also gets really sooty, and these wooden discs are unfinished, and um, I don't want the soot to stain the bare wood. So instead, I'm using a quarter inch birch, and I am cutting this using my compressor so that I don't have any um, soot issues at all. So the whole reason I even created this jig is because I want to make this process as easy as possible. I don't want to have to remove any of the hardware and I really just want this to be a quick and efficient job. So keeping that in mind, I also figured, you know, I recently cleaned my laser and I'm going to keep it clean so that any of the hardware that hangs down doesn't rub up against the soot and get dirty. So I'm also going to give it a quick clean after I cut this jig. All right, so I'm just about ready. So all I really need to do is you know, take the, the lanyards out of the packaging. And once I've got that ready, I'm gonna go ahead and set them up in my jig. Now, before I set it up, I kind of want to show you how I intentionally created this jig so that when you put the wooden disc down, it falls on two blades rather than one. Because if I have it sitting on just one blade, like you see here, then it'll wobble back and forth. So I basically measured the distance between my blades and set it up that way. Now, this is set up for an Eon Mira 7 like mine, but you can easily just take the template and then space it accordingly to the blades on your laser. All right, so now I've taken my jig, I've placed it back on my laser bed. I kind of pushed it up against um, the front just so I could make sure I had it steady. And now I am going to try to line up my red dot pointer with my the center of that little target that I have. And this is my guide to help me make sure that I get everything lined up. So there you go, I'm just pushing the jig, uh, making sure that the red dot is right in the middle of that target. And then I'm gonna set this as my origin. So now I can go ahead and frame the jaw and you're gonna see that it's gonna fall right in the center of all of my discs. So now all I have to do is fill out the jig and um, get ready to run my job. All right guys, I'm gonna pause here really quick because originally, um, I didn't record this part of the project because I thought it wasn't necessary, but the more I'm watching this video, as I edit it, I realize I can make it better. So I'm gonna show you the light burn component of how I put this together. Now, you're gonna notice that I've got the center target right here in green, and then over here I have these little lines. And this actually, I mean, for me it's not that necessary, but I thought these might be helpful because I have a lot of, lot of laser buddies um, that you guys tell me, um, you know how when I'm working on a jig, I push it against the back of my laser or the front to help make sure I have it straight. Um, but a lot of my laser buddies with other Chinese lasers, they don't have that backing. So 
you it's tricky like when you set it down you don't have it some have something to push it up against to make sure that it's straight so i thought hopefully this can help as a guide so let's say you've cut your jig you've taken it off of the laser so you can remove all of these center pieces and then you lay it back down well you can point your laser on the center here but how do you know for sure that you haven't laid it down you know kind of crooked like this you know uh without being able to like butt it up against something so I thought once you lay it back down, you can point your red dot pointer here and then frame the job based off of the outer frame. So if you have it on a center origin like I do here, so you'll frame the job and you'll make sure that your laser is going right over these lines, right? Because then you know that you've placed the wood straight on your laser. Once you've done that, then you can I'm gonna hold down the shift key and using my mouse, I'm gonna drag over all of my names. Now you can send this job and frame based off of, you know, just the selected graphics. So that's what you see me doing the video. I have these selected, nothing else is selected. As a matter of fact, I can hide it if it, you know, helps visually. So it's only gonna frame based off of these that I have selected. So. Um, I hope that helps clarify. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so now that I have everything set up, I'm gonna go ahead and set the focus on my wooden discs. And I'm just gonna use the autofocus feature here to do that. And once I have done that, I'm going to move the nozzle back, get it out of the way, because there's one last step that I choose to do. Not everybody does this, but I prefer to mask bare wood. I do not like, even when there's just a teeny tiny bit of residue, how it can potentially stain the wood around my engraves and I feel like I can get things cleaner and create a more professional finished product for my customers. So if it's bare and not sealed, I choose to mask it. So that's what I'm doing here. I have some um, thin painter's tape. Usually I like it to be a little wider, maybe like two inches, but this is what I had on hand. So I'm doubling it up and then I'm going to take something like a squeegee. In this case, I ended up using my plastic razor because it was just smaller. And I am going to secure the tape onto the wood because whenever you're using masking tape, you always want to squeegee it down. Otherwise you risk um, the tape peeling up and catching fire and that's no fun. So I'm going to use my plastic razor here, secure the tape onto my discs. Um, I will make sure I have everything centered on my target one last time, I'll frame the job, and then I will run it. All right, we're gonna pause here again because I've realized there's another opportunity to make this video even better for you. So as you're watching the time lapse, you're gonna notice that my laser is actually doing each lanyard individually. I did that intentionally. Typically when I am going to start a job, I like to look at my different options because Lightburn will give me control or at least give me some options when it comes to the pattern in which the, um, the laser is gonna engrave. And this can be a huge difference in terms of time. So I'm gonna double click on my uh, fill here and I'm gonna look at these options. Right now it's set to fill all shapes at once. Now I'm gonna click okay and I'm gonna go ahead and look at the preview by clicking right up here on this little computer. And you'll see if I, if I choose this option, my job is gonna be 50 minutes, okay? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna double click it again and I'm gonna change it. Let's see what happens if I change it to fill groups together. And when I go back here, holy cannoli, I just saved myself a lot of time. It's dropped down to 20 minutes. So 
I tend to play with those options, typically full groups together. I mean, really, it just, demand, it just depends on the, uh, on the design, but um, I, I tend to gravitate to this one the most, but I'm just going to show you, you know, the differences. And then here it's 22 minutes. So just keep that in mind when you're going to run a job. Take a look. See what's going to be the most efficient and save the most time. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so the job is, it's finished. So now I'm gonna show you how I'm just going to peel up the painter's tape. And actually this would, it actually went much quicker once I had these laying flat on a surface, but I don't know, I decided I wanted to show it to you from this camera angle. So I'm using my little plastic razor to remove any of the extra bits of the masking tape. Um, took me a minute doing it like this up in the air, but that's it. Then the job was finished. I want to say the entire job, I should have, you know, recorded the time, but I know that it took less than 20 minutes to do uh, 16 of these. So I'm not, I'm, you know, not, that's not too shabby. So that's it. I'm going to peel off the painter's tape, clean off any of the extra bits using my plastic razor and uh, repackage them and I'm done. Well, Maker, that's it for today. As promised, I am giving away this jig for free. So if you want to download it, just head on over to my website and click on the freebie option. I get these from Sunshine Laser Supplies and I will leave their link in the description box below. And with that, I hope you learned something with me today. Let's get connected on social media and I'll see you guys here soon. Over at That Mom with a laser.